To be human means to create. That's why artists like you and I exist. So what happens when art loses its human touch? It's fair to say that AI art has pretty much taken over the internet by storm. And as a distant observer to it all, um, it seems to me that it's really advanced very quickly in a very short period of time. And I think that's sort of contributing to the shock factor of it all. It certainly created some controversy, particularly with the photography community. Some argue it's detrimental to traditional photography, while others will argue that it represents the future of the medium. What's for certain is AI is here, and it's making its presence known. Believe it or not, odds are you've already used AI in some capacity with your own photography. You've probably heard of the term machine learning at some point. It's a subset of artificial intelligence that uses algorithms trained on data to speed up tasks, and in the case of photography, make for efficient editing workflows. I'm not gonna stand here and act like I know more than that sentence, but it sounded good when I said it. But we're seeing this machine learning being implemented into editing softwares, and I personally used it myself. Capture One, for example, has this new grouping feature, and it takes all the similar looking images and it groups them so you can quickly find the best moment out of a large batch of photos. Pretty much every new iPhone camera uses machine learning. It's part of the reason why your images from your phone look so good. So there's no denying that AI is already here and it's already stamped its ground in the photography uh, sphere, I guess. And yeah, it's been here for a while, but has it potentially now crossed a line? AI generative models such as DALI 2 and Midjourney have created some of the most wild concepts come to life. And the way it works is through text-based prompts that you basically feed the AI. And depending on how descriptive you are with it, the more accurate or closer representation to what you are thinking of comes to life. You know, if I'm gonna stand here and talk about this, I might as well try it out myself and see how it's done, right? All right, so I don't have access to Midjourney, which seems to be the most advanced AI, um, but I do have access to DALI 2. Don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but regardless, it's open here and we're gonna check it out. So DALI 2 is an AI system that can create realistic images and art from a description in natural language. We'll see about that. Okay, so this is the homepage that you're greeted with um, looks like they have some examples of images created with the AI okay so yeah I remember using it a while back it looks like I have nine credits left um, so I should just use those up uh, for this experiment um, oh and that's nice it says that I'm human just a, a little reassurance, um, maybe some possible ominous foreshadowing to 10, 15 years from now. All right, so it says, start with a detailed description. So like I said before, um, it's gonna be, the image I create is gonna only be as good as the description or how descriptive I am. I'm particularly interested in how AI can create photorealistic images. Um, so I came up with a prompt that's based off an actual image I took. I took this photo in Chef Chouan, Morocco. Some of you might remember it from the Chef Chouan POV video that I did. I made a joke on Twitter saying that these images were generated with AI. Um, they weren't, but uh, let's see if AI can actually create something close to this image I took. So here's my first prompt, a street photo of a black cat in a blue painted alley in Morocco. Street photo of a black cat in a blue painted alley in Morocco. Kind of scared. <laughs> All right, 
Let's go. Oh, wow. The server is currently overloaded with other requests. Sorry about that. You can retry your request. I hope I didn't just waste a credit on this thing. Let's try again. <laughs> okay, so finally worked. This is pretty interesting. Um, it actually kind of looks like Chef Juan Morocco, not gonna lie. Clearly doesn't look like an actual photo. Um, these look more like paintings, abstract paintings. Um, let's take a closer look. I like the composition of this one. I mean, the fact that it even created something like this is pretty impressive, um, but it's not exactly photorealistic and it's not going to fool anyone um, into thinking it's a real picture, right? Let's see if I can make my description a bit more descriptive. Digital photograph of a black cat in a blue painted alley in Chef Shawan, Morocco. And the server's overloaded. Oh, wow. Okay, that's... It's getting closer to um, more photorealistic, I, I guess. I don't know. None look exactly like my picture, obviously, but... I kind of like the composition of this one. So I want to try a different description for a completely different image. An image I didn't even create yet. Um, and here's the prompt. Color street photograph of a window reflection in Paris that shows a cafe waiter serving someone a cup of coffee. Now that is one run on sentence. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. It definitely understood what I meant by window reflection. And it's created some pretty interesting compositions here. I really like this picture. Just the whole palette and the, the composition of the, the person with the hat sitting down, a chair, and the waiter. And that's an interesting composition too with the, the reflection of the sky and the buildings. Pretty cool. I mean, just looking at these pictures, they it's pretty impressive that AI can create something like this. Um, but to me, these images, they, they obviously don't look or feel real right they look like what they are computer generated renders or something a digital artist would create in photoshop in terms of photography i don't think this is fooling anyone into thinking it's an actual image and that whole idea of fooling people into thinking something is real that's sort of at the center of this whole photography and ai debate and that's where more advanced ai systems such as midjourney come in and shake things up a bit these are all AI renders created by Nick St. Pierre, who I came across on Twitter. He's been publicly sharing his findings and AI examples using the Midjourney AI system. Midjourney just released its fifth version of the system, and he's been comparing version four to version five, and just some of the images he's been able to create it was really eye-opening to me. I'll have his Twitter account linked in the description for you to check out more of what he's been working on. Seeing these images, I clearly see why photographers are scared of AI, and I share a lot of those same feelings. To the layman's eye, you could easily misinterpret these images as being real. Now there are some tells that might give it away that these were AI generated, but I think it's fair to say that AI has gotten to the point now where it's real enough. Real enough in the sense that this image could probably fool someone into thinking it's real. Real enough in the sense that it's no longer all fun and games now. Here are some of the examples of the prompts that Nick used to create these street portraits.
Midjourney version 5 is clearly a much more advanced recognition of the smaller details, and I think that's contributing to, to the realness of the image. The way the light falls off the subject's face, to me, is definitely uh, the biggest advancement here. Now, as much as these particular examples feel very realistic, there's definitely this staged feeling to them. Now, part of that is part of the prompt he's using here, because he's using, you know, street fashion portrait as part of his prompt. And I think street fashion portraits, they oftentimes look a bit staged like this. But Nick does have some examples that show larger scenes with more people in them. But it seems like the more people you introduce into the scene, the more issues pop up. Like in this photo, for example, you see some faces that, uh, well, yeah. So what does it all mean for photography? You might have noticed I've been avoiding calling AI images as AI photography. And that's because it isn't. It's not photography. By definition, photography means to draw with light. And there's only two ways you can do that with film or with a digital sensor. You can try to make something look like photography, but it's never going to truly be photography by definition. Now, what is that worth? Pretty much nothing because in this day and age, we're so exposed to media and images, you know, online, on our phones. It's the idea that no one is going to be able to tell the difference between what's real and what's not. And that's really the most concerning part of it all in terms of photography. And you just saw those examples. If you looked at that and that's the progress within the last year or so, imagine what it will be in five years and what impact will it have on photography as an art form, as a medium for journalism, as a profession. This New York Mag newsletter used AI-generated images to portray scenarios that they were talking about in their article. In this instance, the images were clearly labeled as AI, and that piece of information is going to be more critical than ever before. AI is a hot topic right now, so I'm not necessarily blaming New York Mag for using AI um, for this, but in essence, a job that could have been available to a photographer or an illustrator was lost to AI. Is this the future of how companies are going to create images? For some, it might just come down to money, right? Is it more cost effective to pay for AI to do the job than it is a photographer? Now, I'd like to think most businesses wouldn't think this way and they'd much prefer to work with an actual person. In the end, it's people making these decisions, right? And you know, we all have that human need to connect with other people. Which leads me to what I think will be a silver lining to all of this. Um, with the introduction of AI uh, in photography or just art in general, I think AI will ultimately make us appreciate human art more than ever before. Because there's going to be so much discussion of what's real and what's not, I think there's going to be a greater appreciation for art when we see a piece of art and learn that a person created it that a person's artistic vision and skill went into the whole process of creating something. I think that in turn will make us become better viewers, better appreciators of art, because we'll take more time to closely look at an image, to study all of what's there, and we'll think more about the artist behind the camera in the process. This is my optimistic view of it all because AI is here and it's not going anywhere. AI art is going to make itself known just like all the other mediums that came before it. We shouldn't necessarily dismiss its existence, but instead figure out how we can adapt, how we can learn to uh, coexist with AI images, because that's the reality, and we're going to have to figure that out sooner or later. So what do you guys make of all of this? Do you think AI is a real threat to photography? Or do you think this is all just kind of overblown and an overreaction to, you know, a new medium being introduced?
So thank you guys for watching and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for creators like you and I to create a professional looking website that shows off our favorite works. They have easy to use templates to get you started or you can build your site entirely from scratch. Squarespace has been a pivotal part of my own business for the last six years and I highly recommend it for anyone looking for a better way to display their work. You can try them out for free by visiting squarespace.com faisal and make sure to use the code faisal that will give you 10% off your first purchase.